Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to this very special bonus video that we're adding to the Mystery Demo series. For those of you that have had a keen eye in the Babylon world, you may have noticed that there's been something special added on top of the mystery demo scene that we want to walk through with you today. But we're going to do things slightly differently. Instead of going through line by line, piece of code, writing it all out together, this one we're actually going to look at the completed code together, and we're going to give a much higher level overview together. So this is one where you're going to actually want to click on the playground, follow along with me as I'm explaining things, but then also you're going to want to play around with things and try it out yourself. So we're not going to build it, build it entirely from scratch. We're going to look at something that's already been constructed and then kind of deconstruct the different pieces at a much higher level. As a reminder, if you have not already seen the Mystery Demo series, it's a nine-part video series where we go over building a demo entirely from scratch together, and all along the way you don't actually know what it is that we're building. So before we begin in this one, if you haven't seen the Mystery Demo series, stop here. There'll be spoilers if you continue. Go check out those videos first before you check out this one. All right, you've been warned. Without any further ado, let's jump right on in. So this is where we ended up at the end of our mystery demo series. It's a beautiful underwater scene with volumetric lighting effects, fog, and this beautiful caustics effect done through the node material editor to create an awesome shader, all running at 60 frames a second. It is incredible. But if you've had a keen eye, then you've probably seen that there's been something special added on top of this since the ending of this uh, of part nine of the mystery demo series, and it looks a little something like this. There are now fish inside of our amazing underwater scene. And what we want to do is we want to show you how high level the fish system was created because it's done entirely with a brand new addition to Babylon that is a navigation mesh and crowd agent system. It's super powerful, and the all the fish components were more or less done with that system, and I want to show you how that works because it's a beautiful addition to the scene. Okay, let's go ahead and start by looking at where we're creating the scene, okay? The create scene and then that new function. There's a couple of new additions in here. The first one is the let navigation mesh uh, excuse me, nav navigation plugin equal a new babylon.recast.js plugin. Okay, the recast JS plugin is the thing that does all of the awesome crowd system building for us. And we're going to leverage it to do this awesome AI uh, fish swimming around uh, effect. So we're, th th the next thing here that you'll see is we're going to create an array called fishes and a variable called time that will set to zero. All right. So let's scroll down a little bit. Let's go to past the particles to here. And we'll say the first thing that we're going to do is create this nav mesh parameters. Okay. High level, here's how the navigation mesh and crowd agent system works. You're going to create a crowd. A crowd is a group of agents. You're going to then create individual agents with a bunch of parameters. And then you're going to constrain those agents and that crowd to a certain mesh, to the bounds of a certain mesh. So they can't travel beyond that mesh. And so you can basically say, hey, crowd, you're going to go free roaming, free pathing even with this system through this, uh, through the world, but you have to be constrained to the bounds of that mesh. Okay? And so the first thing that we're going to do is set some parameters for the nav mesh. Now, to show you the nav mesh, actually, let's scroll down just a little bit. We're, this is now past the loading of the individual uh, underwater objects. And we'll keep scrolling down, uh, keep scrolling down here until we get to uh, line 281. Line 281 is where we're actually loading the nav mesh. Now, the mesh, the nav mesh to start is simply a plane that's been shrink wrapped over the world, okay? And it is actually not visible. Uh, here because we're disposing of it. But I wanted to show you briefly what it looks like. Uh, it's ugly. It's just more or less at a low poly mesh that's been shrink wrapped on top of the world. That's basically it. It's basically this black stuff here that you're seeing. Okay. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, load this mesh. 
Then we're going to use this navigation plugin that we created earlier. And we're going to say the method create nav mesh. So we pass in the nav, nav mesh the, that's been loaded. The, this is new meshes. That's the mesh that's been loaded with this call. And then we're going to give it the parameters that you just saw above. And then what we're going to do is say, okay, so now the crowd system, the navigation system has its nav mesh. We actually don't need the original mesh anymore. Hence why we get rid of it here with the dispose. Okay. And then this line is very important because here is where we're actually going to set up the crowd. Remember, I mentioned that there are three components. There's the nav mesh. That's the area that the crowd agents are constrained to. There's the crowd, which is the collection of all the individual agents. And then of course, there's an individual agent itself. So we're going to create the crowd using the create crowd method. And then we're going to say, uh, we want to actually have um, the maximum number of agents is 30. And then the maximum uh, radius for each individual agent is uh, 0.1. Okay. And then what we're going to do is say for our individual agents, we're going to have a list of parameters. I'm not going to go through this. It's just a bunch of information. There's a ton of stuff that you can add here and tweak. So check that out by yourself. But this is something that we're going to use for the fish and we'll reference it down below. So we're going to set up the agent parameters for the fish. And then you also, you'll see something here for camera. I'll come back to that at the end. We're going to skip over the camera for now. Okay. So now let's get into line 315. Here is where we actually load the fish. Now the fish is a mesh with, uh, um, uh, with animation already on it. Uh, that was done by Patrick Ryan. And so we're going to load in the fish and we're going to create a transform node. We're more or less, oh, and then here, this is where we're going to apply the uh, material. Now this is a special node material tree that we've done that has the textures for the fish as well as an extra thing that I wanted to show you very, very briefly. So this, this will look uh, a little bit like what you've seen uh, in the rest of the mystery demo series, because we have stuff like lighting and the specular treatment, and there's some ground reflection here. Here's where we get into a little bit of color correction and we're bringing in some of the textures. There's a ton of stuff that hopefully will look pretty familiar to you. Um, however, there's also a few new components, in particular, this one, one called a bend modifier. And we'll come back to this in a little bit. But essentially what this is, is even though the fish's tail is animating, if the fish changes direction, we need the tail to move more based on how fast it's rotating towards uh, whichever direction it's headed. And so this built into the vertex shader actually takes in parameters to say how fast am I rotating towards my destination. And then we're going to bend the tail on top of the animation that much more to give that effect that the fish are turning. It's awesome that it's built right here into the shader. And that's all the genius of Cedric at work. Okay, so let's jump back here. What we're going to do is basically say, okay, we have a node material called fish mat and we're going to clone the fish. Okay. We're going to clone it several times. We're going to run over this. Uh, I'm going to skip a few parts of this here. Uh, again, this is basically just setting up some basic things. We're saying, Hey, you know what? The fish should actually be scaled lower because they, you know, came in a little bigger than the scenes. So we're just adjusting the scale here and then the position and rotation. And then, okay, here, this random position is going to be a key thing that we want to cover. This is a new function called get random position. It's up here and we're going to use it several times throughout this fish system. Uh, what it does is it basically says, Hey, I'm going to get a random angle. I'm going to get a random um, distance. Okay. And then I'm going to get a uh, position based on those two things. And then here's the really interesting part. This, I have now a random position in space. And then what I want to do is I want to say, Hey, navigation system, I want you to give me the closest point on the navigation mesh relative to my random position that I've created here. And then I actually want to return that. So what I end up with is a random position, but then the closest one on the mesh, and that's what's actually returned uh, through this function. Okay. So the random position that we end up with here, uh, right here is actually a random position on the mesh itself. Okay. And then we're going to create a transform node for the fish. Uh, we're going to give it a couple of angle properties here. I'm going to skip over some of this. Okay. And here, here, we are going to take the crowd and say, it's now time to add an agent. Now, remember at this point, the agent is not a fish. The agent is simply a crowd component. It's a single instance in the crowd. That's all it is. 
but we wanna give it the random position that we created. We wanna give it the agent parameters from above, and we wanna give it this transform here, okay? Now those things are important, but it's not a fish yet. Here, we're gonna take our fishes array, and we're going to push or add in the, the each individual clone of the fish. There's, uh, and, and it has a bunch of parameters that it needs. It needs the mesh itself, that's the fish, uh, with the animation. It needs the transform, it needs a direction, it needs the random position. This is very interesting because look, the destination is random position, but here in the crowd.addAgent, this random position is its starting location. So now we're saying that a starting location and its destination for the fish array are the same number. Remember that, because we're going to come back to that, okay? Uh, and so essentially, we now have a bunch of agents, okay? We have fish. Uh, yeah, we have a, a, an array of fish objects uh, or clones. Uh, and then, this is a really important part. I'm going to get rid of my picture in picture here uh, very briefly. Uh, we have fishes pick up new destination, and we're passing in the navigation plugin, the crowd, the fishes, and time. Okay, and so this is a new function that is rendered, or excuse me, uh, called once per frame. And that's a very, very important thing, once per frame. And so I'm gonna scroll all the way up to the top, and you'll notice that there is a function here called fishes pick new destination. Okay, so we're gonna go over this very high level. I'm not gonna go over all the pieces of this, but very high level, we're going to uh, detect uh, the agent, and we're gonna say, hey, the agent is now gonna be equal to the fish. That happens here, okay? For every frame, we want the agent to be equal to a fish clone. And we also are gonna detect uh, the fish's or agent's current position and its destination. And we're gonna look for a distance between those two things. So a couple of things here. Here, this is where we're setting uh, the agent uh, equal to uh, one of the fish instances, okay? Uh, in our fish array. And then we're gonna do some math here. Uh, and well, there's one other thing that I'll cover in a second. There's do some math and basically calculate a distance between the uh, current position and its destination. And here, if that distance is less than a certain threshold, in this case, five, then I'm going to get a new random position and set that as the agent's destination. So once the uh, position of the crowd agent has gotten within a certain distance of its destination, we're gonna go pick a new random position in the world, then ask the navigation mesh what's the closest position of this world position on your navigation mesh, and set that as the new destination for the fish. Okay, but there's another thing that's happening in here, another thing with some of this math that I'm skipping over, uh, hand-waving past is we are going to, if I, let me use this pen as an example, if I were to uh, simply say, hey, you have a new destination, let's say that this is the front of the fish. If this is my new destination, I can't guarantee that the fish is actually aimed directly at the uh, new destination point. In fact, if the fish was headed this way and this was my destination, the fish could end up floating uh, sideways towards that destination, pathing sideways towards, towards it. So some of this math actually looks at where the fish is currently aimed and then says, where should it be aimed relative to where is the uh, destination? And then of course, it adds in the math to be able to move it or rotate it, excuse me, uh, rotate it towards uh, the actual destination. And then as we covered before, based on how fast that rotation is happening, we will bend the tail of the fish a little bit more based on the speed of the rotation on top of the animation to give you that effect that the fish is really whipping its tail as it turns. Isn't that cool? Isn't that, I think that's so awesome. This is the crowd system at work. And so you create the navigation mesh, you create the crowd with a bunch of agents in it, you add agents with different parameters and locations, and then you say, hey, I want each agent to have uh, to be the fish with a specific destination. I wanna detect how close I am to the destination. Once I've reached that destination, I wanna create a new random destination. I know that's a lot that we covered there, very conceptual. All of the code is here. You should totally go check it out yourself and play with it, it's an amazing system. But there's one more thing I wanna cover first. We skipped over this before. We're gonna scroll uh, back down 
to uh, where we're calling in the navigation mesh and where we're specifically setting up the parameters for the agent parameters. Because I skipped over this camera stuff here. Now, essentially what we're doing is we're telling the crowd system that there is one additional type of agent. It has a different set of parameters and it's located at the exact same place as the camera. And the reason that we're doing this is we basically want to create a barrier between the fish and the camera. And so by having this extra crowd agent and saying, hey, you're located here at the camera and consider it that we're creating a bubble of space around the camera so the fish don't get too close to the camera. Otherwise, they might uh, just swim right through it and be really, really jarring. So that essentially is the crowd uh, agent and navigation mesh system inside of Babylon. It's this amazing new tool that you should totally check out. And it was an awesome addition to the demo that we created in the mystery demo series, that underwater scene. It adds so much life uh, and dynamic movement to the scene. So it's totally, totally awesome. Again, this is me just showing off the amazing work done by Cedric and Patrick. And I really just wanted to take a moment to highlight that as an awesome addition on top of the mystery demo series. Remember, you can find a link to the playground for the fish down below in the description. And also, if you haven't already done so, please check out the mystery demo series. It's an awesome series where we build that demo together from scratch. And lastly, finally, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any future updates. Thank you so much for checking this out. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.